Good afternoon and <clears throat> excuse me, welcome to another InReach field experience webinar. Today we're going to be talking about the InReach Explorer Plus and doing a, a deep dive into all of its powerful features and ways that you use the device with the Explore website and the EarthMate app and really covering everything that you need to take the device out on an adventure. An introduction, my name is Chip Noble. I'm a product manager here at Garmin and uh, I'm an avid outdoorsman. As you can see, this is a picture of uh, winter time in Weld, Maine. That's uh, an area where I like to spend a fair amount of time and I am using an InReach Explorer Plus in this picture. This is on the side of um, Mount Blue looking out over Webb Lake in Weld, Maine. So uh, lots of fun with the InReach Explorer Plus and a good picture because that's what we are here to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start with an overview of the device, the, the physical device. I have one here in Reach Explore Plus. Uh, we're going to look at the device, its features. Uh, we're going to look at um, that. Then we're going to look at the website, some details about the website and how that works with the device. We're going to look at the EarthMate app. We're even going to go deep into how to send messages, how to start tracking, how to request weather forecasts, all of those things. So hang tight. Uh, there's a lot to cover. Uh, we're going to move relatively quickly. Like I said, the slide deck is available and the recording, so don't feel like you have to take notes. Uh, but we want to make sure we have time for everyone's questions at the end. Uh, so with the device overview, uh, here are some key InReach Explorer Plus features that we want to talk about. Certainly the device is an InReach satellite communicator. It uses InReach satellite technology to keep you connected even if you're outside of cell phone coverage. So you don't need to have your phone with you. You don't need to be inside of cell phone range with your phone. You can put your phone in airplane mode, tuck it in your pocket, rely on the InReach Explorer Plus for communication. This system works with the EarthMate app that is a companion to load on your phone. The phone then becomes the remote control for your device. It's also where you can go to view detailed maps. Uh, you can see charts and imagery, and you can use it to send messages. We're going to do uh, a deep dive into the EarthMate app as well in this presentation. The device has mapping and sensors built into it. It comes preloaded with the DeLorme Topo uh, North America maps. Uh, it also has built-in sensors, a digital compass, a barometric altimeter, and accelerometer that allows us to give you positional information as you're moving, your heading, uh, your distance to destination, that sort of thing. The InReach Explorer Plus is a great device for people looking for long battery life. You get up to 100 hours of tracking. That's sending your location once every 10 minutes to the uh, to your MapShare website. We'll talk about MapShare, but that's where your friends and family might go to follow along while you're out on your adventure. Does all of that with an internal lithium-ion rechargeable battery. The InReach Explorer Plus is a rugged device. It has a water rating of IPX7. That is a number uh, that represents how long the device can be submerged in water. It can be it can be submerged to three feet for 30 minutes and still uh, is, is uh, rated to uh, continue to perform when you take it out of the water. So IPX7 for uh, water rating. So some, some features there about the Explorer Plus. A little more detail on um, the InReach technology. As I mentioned, this uses the um, the Iridium satellite network, that is a 100% global Iridium satellite network that allows you to do the core in-reach features. That's messaging, that's tracking, that's declaring an emergency using the SOS button if you should need. All of that happens over satellites. You don't need to be inside of cell phone range. You don't need to have your phone with you. You, you uh, like I said, airplane mode and, and tuck the phone away, keep it safe while you use your Explorer Plus. Using that 100% global Iridium satellite network that works anywhere in the world, you can um, you can receive, send and receive messages. The, the nice thing about Iridium is that you get a message delivery confirmation, and that means not only do you know your message went out, um, but other people can send replies to you. So two-way messaging is very powerful. You can take advantage of that two-way messaging. You can imagine if you have an emergency, now you can send your messages to, G, to, the, uh, to the Garmin IERCC uh, Emergency Response Center. They receive the message. 
they respond to you and let you know that help is on the way. We're, we'll look at SOS later in the slides. Tracking is a feature that allows you to send your location over the Iridium satellite network to your MapShare page. And we're gonna look in detail at MapShare, but that's where friends and family go. They see a breadcrumb trail that shows your progress along your course. Uh, they might see planning information that you put on the website that shows what, what route you're following, the waypoints that you'll get to along the way. They can use that site to send a message to you. You could post it onto your social media page. Someone goes to Facebook, they see that you're on this hike, they click on your map share, they see the picture, uh, the map of where you are, they get to participate with you. It's a very powerful feature. Navigation is also a, a thing that, um, that you can do with the device. You can navigate along a route or to a waypoint. And with uh, within reach, you can request a weather forecast, uh, and that includes a land forecast or a marine forecast. We have basic and premium forecasts that control the the amount of detail in each message. All of that is possible with the inReach technology that's part of the inReach Explorer Plus. The note here at the bottom, that's an important one. Certainly to use the satellite features, you need to have an active satellite subscription. Um, and we'll talk a bit about how to do that. And the other note here is that there are uh, some parts of the world, some jurisdictions that regulate and even prohibit the use of satellite communication devices. We just want to make sure we point out that it's it's all of our responsibilities as device users to check in on those locations, our bucket list trips, wherever they might be around the world, and find out if there are any uh, applicable laws about the use of satellite communication devices. Make sure you do that before you head out. We don't want anyone to be surprised uh, when they come into a country that they can't use the device that they were excited about. So. Uh, I'd like to look a little bit at the physical device and an overview. And you see here two different kind of views of the Explorer Plus. On the left, you see the obvious pieces, the antenna at the top. I want to make sure you have a clear view of the sky and you keep that antenna pointed up to, to the sky. If you hold the device upside down, it's now pointing your signal towards the ground. Uh, you're with a with a helical antenna, it's like a like a, uh, like a mushroom, the top of a mushroom that comes out of the top of the device. Um, the, the only weak signal point is directly out of the bottom. So keep the device pointed up. That could be clipped to your pack. It could be in a, in a pack bag, a basket, uh, excuse me, the, the top um, pocket on your backpack. Make sure that it stays with that antenna pointing to the sky for your best signal. Looking at this, this uh, image, you see this, the LED button. We're gonna talk about the different ways that that LED can report things like, a, like you have a message waiting, or you're having trouble sending a message, or you have a low battery light, uh, uh, life that is all reported through that LED. You see the buttons on the front of the device. Hopefully everyone that's using an Explorer Plus has discovered the lightning bolt or the shortcut menu. That's a quick way to send presets. It's, um, it's a quick way to move around uh, when you're composing messages. We'll look at the details of shortcut menu. The X at the bottom is cancel. The directional pad in the middle is straightforward to move things around. There is an arrow here at the bottom pointing to where the micro USB port is and the weather cap that covers that. The uh, On the right side image, you see the power key at the top that's tucked in nicely between the antenna and the side of the device to prevent uh, objects in your backpack from pressing up against the power button, uh, it's protected. The SOS button is also protected underneath a, a cap there. And when you have to declare an emergency, take the device, pry the door open, reach in, mash the button. I won't do it in the office here, but, uh, but that will declare an SOS. Press and hold the button until you see the SOS countdown start. That's the clue that you can let go. If you haven't seen the countdown button, continue to press and hold. Uh, and that will declare your emergency. Continuing down the face of the device, you have the zoom in and zoom out buttons. Those are used on the map page. They're also used as shortcuts when you're composing messages. We'll talk about shortcuts. And then the, the three lines or the menu button um, and the check mark. The, the menu button 
is used to access additional features on each of our pages or if you want a shortcut back to the home screen you can press that menu button twice i'm sure all of you have found that it's a very fast way where whatever level deep you are into a workflow if you press the menu button twice you go all the way back to the home page um, and then i mentioned the check button at the bottom that is your okay or select button that you would use when you're navigating through the interface a little device overview. Uh, looking at the device icons, if we go to any of the pages uh, on the Explorer Plus at the top, you see that header bar. That's where you would see uh, status updates on how the device is performing. You see the time, you see the battery life, but then there are a bunch of these symbols. And we just wanted to make sure everybody understood the symbols. There is the, the two arrow for, uh, the two arrows up and down, that's for sending and receiving. There is um, also, if an exclamation point is on top of those up and down arrows, that's telling you that it's having a hard time sending. There is a GPS signal strength, solid for 3D. Um, without a fill, that's 2D. And then if there's a question mark, it's having trouble for it's searching for a GPS signal. The number inside the message bubble, that's how many messages you have waiting. You see the tracking symbol, Bluetooth, charging, and uh, charging complete. All of that will read out in the header bar to give you a status update on how your device is performing. From there, we look at the LED that I mentioned um, when we were looking at the physical device. That LED has a couple of flash patterns that you'll see. One is flashing green that tells you someone sent you a message and you should go to the messages page and read it, uh, see what they had to share. If the LED is flashing red, it could mean one of two things. One could be that it is uh, having a difficulty sending a message. If it doesn't have a clear view of the sky, after 15 minutes of trying to transmit the message, it will come back and flash and let you know that it hasn't successfully sent that message. There'll also be a little notification that pops up, but visual cue with the red uh, LED. Also to let you know that your battery life has dropped below 10%. This being a safety device, we wanna really make sure that we don't let the battery drop down uh, too low because you want to have enough battery if an emergency comes up. And then if it is alternating between red and green, that is because the device is in SOS mode, hopefully, and you'd have to actually open, physically open the door and press the button. So you would know that you had done that, but a little reminder that you're in SOS mode. And then if you cancel an SOS, it flashes rapidly because not only do you, do you cancel the message, but you actually have to wait for a I'm canceling message to be sent to the Garmin IERCC so that they know that the emergency has been taken care of and they can contact uh, local area search and rescue and tell them to stand down. So um, a handful of patterns that you see with that green and red LED on the front of the device. <clears throat> From here, uh, there, the, there are menus on the device as we talked about, the three line button or the, the menu button accesses those menus. Um, and on the home page, there are a series of different icons on the home page that allow you to, to control things. And, and um, you can scroll around in those screens. Uh, you can also reorder them. And one way to do that is to press the menu key and you get this option to reorder icons. You may find through the use of the device that you don't need to have, um, say, the sun, moon tab or something like that. You can turn, you can turn that page off uh, using the uh, the menu and there's also the the shortcut menu and I mentioned that that was the lightning bolt you press the lightning bolt and you get the options one option is to send a preset message so it's a nice quick shortcut to send I'm checking in everything's okay it's also a shortcut to creating a waypoint a shortcut to starting and stopping tracking an important feature for the device and also a shortcut for checking for any new messages so uh, take advantage of the lightning bolt. It's a, it is a shortcut to quite a few of the important features within your Explorer Plus. Uh, we're going to look at um, uh, uh, sorry. Then on each of the pages, there are screen specific menu options, and you get that by uh, going to the page and pressing menu. It's it's where we give you uh, quick access to configurations or special commands from different pages. So always explore the menus um, on this device really anywhere i'm sure we all do that with our phones and other pieces of technology uh, 
So from here, you're going to look at the settings on the device, and I'm not going to read off all of these, but in the settings section of the uh, InReach Explorer Plus, you can control things like your display, brightness and color, your map, how your map uh, performs, is it north up or direction of travel. There are tracking settings that determine how frequently your location gets sent to MapShare, Bluetooth for pairing your device, uh, you can calibrate your compass. There are some neat features around uh, receiving a message if you're in a really um, uh, noisy or windy environment you may consider setting a flag so that when a message comes in it actually rings until you acknowledge that you got it so you don't miss any messages there are sound controls time units all, all kinds of options in the settings i encourage people to go and explore those uh, particularly the tracking settings and um, the i think tracking and probably the messages are the are the important ones to check out from there, uh, we've broken the the pages into categories really to talk about. There's a there's a handful of categories of these these pages on the device. And the first set that we wanted to look at, really the important piece for the inReach device, is around communication and weather. First page is presets. We'll look at that in detail. But from the presets page, you can go and see the three preset or or check-in messages that you can send from the device. It tells you what the message is and who's going to receive it. You can choose presets and quickly select and send. It's it's a, um, a shortcut to make it very convenient to send those. And the nice thing about presets is that you have um, the ability to send an unlimited number of presets from any of our data plans. So if you're a safety plan user, definitely take advantage of the preset check-in messages all the way up through to our expedition users because it is very convenient to send them. Uh, from there, the, the messages page, this is where you'll go to read incoming messages and to reply or to create a new message if you want to reach out to someone. There's a contacts page on the device. This is where you can go to look to make sure that all the contacts you create on the Explore website when you're setting up your account are in fact uh, synced down onto the device. If you're using the Explore Plus in standalone, when you go out on your big trip, you definitely want to make sure that the people you want to communicate with, that their contacts have been added to the device. So you have their cell phone number or their email address and you're not trying to pull it from memory. Now, if you're connected to your phone, obviously the EarthMate app can access all of the contacts that are already on your phone. But for standalone users, definitely check your contacts to make sure you synced everything correctly. Weather is another communication page, or, or, or um, you know, whether you're, you're sending and receiving weather forecasts or receiving them, I guess. Um, you can request a weather forecast for your location or for a place where you're planning to go. Again, as we mentioned, you can get a, a land-based forecast or a marine forecast. You can control the duration, how many readings you receive with, with either basic or more readings with a premium forecast. Um, the basic forecasts are you pay a message to a one message out of your message allotment to request that forecast. You uh, you pay, and, and then there's a premium charge for the premium messages. Um, in the U.S., it's one dollar for that premium forecast. And then you see the screenshot here, a little detail. You get a you get a condition icon, you get a temperature, you get wind speeds, and that sort of thing. Percent chance of precipitation, lots of detail. Uh, and then also for communication is the SOS page. This is where we go to um, read and reply to messages that that come in from the Garmin IERCC. Some navigating and tracking features. The obviously tracking, this is where you go to start and stop tracking and see some details. How long have you been tracking? How far have you gone? That sort of thing. Um, the trip info page, I misspoke. Trip info is where you go to see how far you've gone. Uh, but this is like any standard handheld GPS device. It is your, um, your maximum speeds, your moving averages, how long you've been traveling, how far you've gone. Uh, trip info is very useful. The location page is great because it shows you your latitude, longitude coordinate, along with uh, specific details about uh, your movement in that point, your elevation and your speed. Um, and a nice one too is also your GPS accuracy. 
Also for navigating and tracking is the routes page. You see here our example, uh, day one and day two of Mount Rainier. This is a route that I planned on the Explore website, and then I sync down to the device, and I access it here when I'm at the trailhead and I'm ready to start navigating. This is the list of the waypoints that I created on the website or in the app, and I synced those to the device. We'll look, you can also create a new waypoint even direct from the Explorer Plus. Compass page, it's great. It shows you your, uh, your bearing when you're out in the field. Um, and if you're navigating, it will, it will show you uh, how to get to your destination. I'm very, oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, the, but the, the, and then the menu for the compass, that's where you go to calibrate uh, your compass and altimeter. That's, uh, that's an important thing to do. Uh, certainly if you, if you want to, if you go to a new location, you can quickly calibrate your compass and calibrate your altimeter. And that gives it the, um, an accurate starting point for things like, um, keeping track of your detailed elevation changes. The map is also a very important page for navigating. You see here the topographic map. Um, there are other map options that you can choose. Uh, you can sync maps to the device. It is also where you can go and change things like um, the, the route and how the route's gonna display and whether or not you have a tracking line that shows on the, on the screen. Um, all of that driven through the menu as well. So the pages that are associated with navigating and tracking. Another section of pages we're gonna talk about are the utility pages. The test page is an important one. We talk a lot about how to test the device before you go. You get five free test messages. You come here, you choose test, you hit the test button, and it sends a message to the Iridium satellites. They get sent down to the server. A message gets echoed back to your device, and you get this reassuring green check mark that lets you know that your subscription is working, everything is fine, and you can head off into the backcountry. There's a data use page that shows you um, how many messages, presets, tracking points you've sent. This is a very useful page if you're a safety plan user or a uh, recreation plan user because you have a limited number, 10 messages in safety, 40 messages in, in uh, recreation. It's worthwhile to keep track of that to know if you're approaching your limits. Um, not a problem if you send more, you just pay an overage per message. Uh, mail check page is where you go to see when was the last time that my device checked in with the satellites. Um, if you're expecting someone to message you, you can see, you see in the screen, last check, that tells you that, well, the device checked for a message, uh, you know, 10 minutes ago. And so you know that any message sent to you within the last 10 minutes has been received. Shifting gears a little bit, talk about the battery life uh, uh, capabilities of the device, and you see, as I mentioned, the Explorer Plus has up to 100 bat hours, 100 hours of battery life at 10 minute tracking. There are some modes that you can change to, to impact that. Uh, if you want a really high detail log of your trip, say you're mapping trails or uh, you're doing a mountain bike ride and you want that high detail, then you can turn on one second logging. You still get up to 75 hours. That's great for a you know, multi-day trip. If you instead would rather have uh, the longest possible battery, there is an option called extended tracking mode that does things like uh, it, it turns off the high detail logging, it turns off your uh, backlight, your Bluetooth, that sort of thing. It, um, things that are, are power intensive. And then if you change your tracking, your send interval, how frequently messages get sent to the Explore website to be 30 minutes, you can get up to 30 days. That's a pretty incredible number for folks, even people who are doing some of the uh, national scenic trails that are, uh, where they're out for, you know, months on end, this really reduces the amount of time you have to spend charging your device. Uh, so that's a very, very exciting thing for people as you think about the battery consumption. Uh, for people who are charging their device in the field, just make sure that your solar charger or power bank has the ability to output five volts of charging power. The hardware team here always talks about if your if your power source has a USB output, then it will it will work with the in-reach devices. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Around operating temperatures, you see on the you know, additional specs about operating temperature, charging temperature, the key is 
Uh, you want to keep the device warm. Uh, negative four degrees Fahrenheit, negative 20 Celsius, the device starts to struggle. So keep it in a jersey, a jersey, in your jacket pocket in close to your body so that your body heat keeps it warm. That could be on your chest, it could be on your arm, that sort of thing. Uh, but just take advantage of inside the jacket uh, pockets. And then if you're not using the device, you want to store it with at least 80% charge. Um, that kind of keeps the battery in good health. And then when you get the device out for your big trip, charge it up at that point to 100%. So that was a quick, a lot and, and fast about the physical device and about the general um, interface and how we move through the menus and what the buttons do. When you first get the device, you're going to take it out and we're going to activate it and you actually go to the Garmin Explore website. So we want to look at that. When we look at the Explore website, it's where we go to uh, manage our in-reach subscriptions. It's where we go to do our trip planning. It's also where we go after a trip has happened to review our activity, see what kind of track logs or waypoints we might have created. And it's a great place to go if you want to do planning sessions around importing routes and waypoints. And so we're going to look at, uh, at some of these details. Um, but that's the key. Think about the Explore website as your, your web portal for management, for planning and reviewing and kind of getting ready to go out on trips. Um, so to start that off, when you go to the Explore website to create your account, um, you, the important piece here is that this is where you would put in your contact information. Um, and then they have the emergency contacts that you put into the account. Make sure that you double check those emergency contacts before any big trips. Make sure they're all relevant. Make sure those people know that you have specified them as an emergency contact. Uh, another thing we talk about is the emergency notes field. That's a great thing to use if you have any special details. Um, perhaps you have uh, you know, an allergy condition or a special blood type where they need to be aware of that if an emergency comes up. Do all of that on the Explore website ahead of time. It's where you go to manage your in-reach device. This is where you control your, uh, your plan, where you can control the subscription that you're, uh, that you're using. You can move up and down in your subscription plans without any penalty. I encourage people, if you have a special trip coming up, get into that expedition plan, get access to unlimited messaging, chat as much as you'd like while you're on your special trip with your friends and family. And then when the trip is over, you can drop back down to a recreation plan if you still want unlimited tracking or go all the way down to the safety plan if you just wanna use the device in case of an emergency. But uh, very easy to to manage your subscription from the Explore website. The other feature uh, that you can use the Explore website for is uh, syncing, and there are instructions on how to sync. Really, th there are two approaches. We're gonna look at those. One is using the EarthMate app. The other is using the Sync desktop app. The Sync, the Sync desktop app allows you to cable connect your Explore Plus to your computer. Um, but before we look at that one, let's look at the EarthMate app and everything that it offers including that syncing capability. Uh, the EarthMate app is a companion app that you load on your smartphone, Android or iOS. It's very powerful because it allows you to first and foremost pair. Uh, you can pair and then connect your uh, InReach Explorer Plus to your phone. That lets you use the phone as a remote control for your device, so starting and stopping tracking choosing the routes you're going to navigate, whether you're going to navigate to a waypoint. It's a, it's a very powerful touchscreen keyboard for typing messages to send over the in-reach satellite communicator. Remember, it's not using the cell phone capability of the phone. Your phone's probably in airplane mode, but it is using the, uh, the paired connected uh, satellite communicator as your modem. You can use it to request weather forecasts and even trigger an SOS. The Explore app is powerful because you'll use it to download a lot of different map types, everything from your topographic map, your aerial imagery, public lands, USGS quad sheets, all of that uh, to enhance your adventure. And those maps are all cached on the device. You don't have to uh, have a, again, you don't have to have cell phone or Wi-Fi. Um, so EarthMate app, powerful for those things. Also very powerful for pairing. And so I'm not gonna get into the detail here, but you see, how to pair your Explore app with an iOS device or with Android. It amounts to going to the pairing section of the EarthMate app 
and you'll see steps and you'll also take your Explorer Plus, you go to settings, you go to Bluetooth, you say pair, and then the two, the phone and the device will be able to talk to each other. And you only have to do it once after you've set up your pairing, it will remember every time that the device turns on and the phone is on, they automatically sync up. So very useful. And I encourage anyone who has an Explorer Plus but hasn't started using the EarthMate app yet, definitely install it, check it out. You'll be glad that you did. Uh, so how to sync. Syncing, as I said, you can either sync through the EarthMate app. Once you've, once you've established that pairing, then it automatically connects to the device uh, from the app and that transfers any data you created on the Explore website or in the Explore app down onto your device. So if you end up using the device standalone, you have all that content there. Make sure that you sync before you leave. You wanna make sure that the app has access to cellular or Wi-Fi to connect to your website. Um, the app doesn't need Wi-Fi to connect to your device. It's using Bluetooth for that. But you always wanna verify that any planning work you did is present on the device before you get into the backcountry. That's a, an important planning step. Um, do that before you leave home. And then after your trip is over, you wanna sync again because any tracking data, any waypoints, anything you created while you're out in the field is on your device. You really wanna protect that by getting it up into the Garmin cloud. And you do that by syncing through the uh, EarthMate app. Um, so syncing with the EarthMate app, just some details here. If you look at the EarthMate app, there's a menu and you see the My and Reach section. If that little Bluetooth icon is there, then you know that you have a connection to your device and it's it should it will automatically sync or you can go into the menu and choose to manually sync uh, as well. And, um, and I apologize, I got ahead of myself, but these are the steps that I just talked through. And you can also choose to manually sync. The other way to sync is using the InReach Sync um, app, and that loads on uh, to the to the computer, and that lets you use a USB cable. You connect the cable, you run the little sync app. Um, it's important because it's how you will sync your firmware updates uh, to the device as well. And the same as oh, and that's the next slide. I'm sorry, but uh, but the same note that we talked about with syncing from the app. You always want to make sure that you do this before you leave for your trip, and that you verify that the data is shown up uh, shows up correctly on the device. So this is what I started to mention is that you use the uh, the Explore Sync app to sync your InReach Explore Plus for firmware updates, and it will check see if there's any update available. Um, we do release them periodically. They're important to get because any fixes or improvements or new features or sometimes we find bugs that we need to fix, um, we roll those out with firmware updates. Just like your phone gets a firmware update, your inReach device gets a firmware update. Use the, uh, the Sync app for that. So now we're gonna do a deep dive. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time. I wanna make sure that we have time for questions. So deep dive into the important features of the inReach Explore Plus and the EarthMate app. And the first one is about messaging. And hopefully everyone is sending lots of messages. They know how to do this. There are a couple of different types of messages that you can send. One is a custom message, just like you might think the, the screen here showing the person holding the device. They've typed out that message with a keyboard. The other type of message is a predefined message. I mentioned the check-in or the preset message. That is a powerful option. There are three of them that you create ahead of time. You specify, I'm checking in, everything's okay. I'm uh, starting my trip, or maybe I'm finishing my trip. You now have three messages that go to your friends and family that you've designated. You don't pay anything for them, send as many as you want. And it really allows you to kind of cover your entire uh, day. I'm, I'm starting my trip, I'm checking in, everything's okay, and I'm, and I'm finished for the day. Uh, so great tool there and, and very easy to send. You just press a couple of buttons. And then quick texts are, uh, there's up to 20. You can customize them. We give you some default messages. They're things like simple yes, no answers, or they're, um, the one I use a bit is, I got your message. I can't reply right now, but uh, um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That kind of message I like to to let friends and family know that I got their message, but I'm not going to stop and type because maybe I'm hiking a really strenuous part of the 
of a hill and uh, and I although usually I do stop and catch my breath but uh, that's when you can use a quick text message because you don't have to type it you pick it from a list it saves you all the typing and, and still gets a nice reply out to somebody uh, messages can be sent to someone's cell phone number can be sent to their email address and a really neat thing is if you have someone's in reach address uh, remember that all of our devices have an in reach address uh, you can tell because they end in at inreach.garmin.com and uh, usually it's your username but that allows two people who are in the back country to talk to each other just using their inreach devices so quickly how you manage your presets and um, and quick text when you go into the explore website there's a messages section you see here the preset section and the quick text section uh, to edit them is really straightforward I'm not going to talk a lot about it you tap the edit button you type in the text that you want to change for message one you type in who you want to send the message to you choose done same thing for a quick text message without the recipient part you tap the edit button you change the message that you want you hit done whoop you hit done and then you have your edited list of quick text and your presets just remember to sync your device after you've made those changes and um, and all of that will then go down onto your inReach Explorer Plus. We talked about the contacts and how important it was to make sure that your app um, and your device have the correct contacts before you get out into the backcountry. I have a list of people that I talk to a lot when I'm I'm out hiking, you know, my wife, my my family, a handful of friends. I need to make sure that I've put their contacts onto my device so that if I leave my phone at home and I'm just going to rely on the Explorer Plus. I have their contact on here and I don't have to try and remember. I, I, um, my phone does all of my remembering. I can't tell you anybody's cell phone numbers anymore. Um, how to do that, add a contact from the contact tab, very straightforward, hit add, fill in the details, hit done. Um, oh, and a good note there, these are, these are for personal casual messages that's different than your emergency contacts which you set up really in the in the main account part of your um, uh, when you set up your explore your explore account sending a preset again pretty straightforward from the preset page from from the home page you choose preset you pick one of the three preset messages you hit send um, and when that message uh, goes out it it uh, remember it's free to send them an important note here is that if a friend or family member receives it and replies to you then you will pay for that message for the reply uh, then looking at quick text messages this is how you would reply to somebody's message you could also send a quick text um, not as a reply but but create a message based off of a quick text most people use them as a reply though, and, and to do that, you choose the message that you received, and when you see the, um, oh, I'm sorry, bear with me for a second. When you see the message, uh, well, this is creating a new message. Um, you can select the recipient, but then the key is the lightning bolt, and so if you were replying to Jay Gordon, or if you were creating a new message to Jay Gordon, uh, you choose, the lightning bolt and then you have access to the list of quick texts you see my favorite I can't reply now I'll write later and that it just saves you typing it is literally a quick way to write a text message and then you hit send um, to send a quick text message from the app same process go to messages choose who you want to send it to choose the lightning bolt pick from the 20 or so quick text messages that you have available I'm on my way and then you can hit send and there's a note here you can choose to enable or disable the location um, we don't talk a lot about reference points but that's the same idea a reference point or adding the location to your message just says um, the, adding the location says this is where i am right now when you send the message i've mentioned the reference point that's if you tap on the map you can actually bring up a message and uh, it will have the location of where you tapped and that that's useful if you want to meet someone at a specific location say you have changed where you want to be picked up um, you can tap on the location where you want to be picked up it will take the latitude longitude for that location put it into the message and then you can say pick me up here um, a, a little uh, sidetrack there sorry on that 
Um, but generally remember to enable or disable the location icon to include where you are when you're sending a message. From there, and then hit send. Um, dun -dun. And I, this is to make sure people realize that in order for that message to be sent, you do have to be paired to an in-reach device. It won't use you know, cell phone or, or Wi-Fi from the EarthMate app unless it's connected to a device. So sending custom messages from inReach, that is uh, how you would type with the device. And um, you do that by, by selecting the messages page on the home screen of the device. You can go in and choose new, you can type in the recipient, uh, and then you have this keyboard that pops up and that allows you to type in perfect weather so far and great views. Once you finish typing, um, you can select done and then you have a send messages button option uh, to send. Wanted to show you a little bit about autocomplete. This is a feature we worked hard on with the device because it can be slightly tedious to type with a keyboard and a, and a directional button. Um, but if you take advantage of autocomplete, it allows you to type a couple of letters and then we actually display what we think you might be trying to say. So you've typed M and E and we're guessing you might mean the word meet, and we pop up a list of suggested words. And then you can move the cursor or you can choose the lightning bolt, which we'll see in a second is a shortcut to, to put the cursor up into that list. And then you choose meet. And when you've done that, uh, it will populate. And then we'll actually suggest the next word based on um, analysis of the types of uh, the way sentences are composed. We, we have some some tables that tell us what the next word might be. So if you typed meet, we're gonna suggest you. You can actually press enter a couple of times and, and a lot of times write out a pretty basic sentences. When you select the suggested word, uh, it takes you back to the keyboard and you can finish typing and then hit done. Some keyboard shortcuts that will make that process that I just described even easier. Um, I mentioned the lightning bolts will move the cursor up into those auto-completed words. The zoom yeah, the out key is backspace, the zoom in key is space. So when you're up uh, in that area, if you realize that you chose the wrong word, then you can quickly hit the, the minus sign uh, two or three times and it will um, you know zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and it will backspace through something. Same with the space button. And then the menu key will, uh, will bring up different keyboards and one of those keyboards is the most important, the emojis, where you can go for your thumbs up symbol um, emoji. And then a bonus, you see the little the little gray triangles in the upper uh, right corner. That is where some additional symbols or related letters, uh, accents, that sort of thing are, are tucked away. So you press and hold and then a fly out will appear and you can choose a different one. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So sending custom messages from the app, uh, a little bit easier because you have the touch screen, same idea though, you choose messages, you put in your contact, you select the message field, you get the keyboard, you type your message just like you would with your, with your normal iOS or Android uh, texting app. Remembering the location option to enable or disable location and then hit send. Uh, and same warning, you need to make sure you have an in-reach device connected. So we'll look at the tracking capabilities of the device, uh, tracking terminology, just for folks to make sure we all remember that your send interval is how frequently a track point gets sent using Iridium from your device to your MapShare page so that friends and family can follow along. Your log interval is logging your location onto your device so that you can use it to find your way out of the woods if you need to. So send to MapShare, log to the device. Auto track is a feature I encourage everyone to turn on. Make sure that you have the recreation data plan so that you're getting unlimited tracking. But once you've done that, then anytime you power on the device, it automatically starts tracking. That's a wonderful feature because even if you don't have someone following along, if an emergency happens and you were unable to declare an SOS, um, you were injured, then at least there's a breadcrumb that shows how you got to where you are. And when you perhaps don't don't come home at the right time, your friends and family start to get nervous, they can look at your MapShare page, 
uh, there are there are ways for them to find you. Uh, so I always encourage people to enable the auto track feature. That and people who are at the recreation plan level should be taking advantage of that feature. Uh, extended tracking, that's what we mentioned during the battery saving section about um, turning off some things on the device for you automatically to extend your battery life. So from the device, you can start and stop tracking. You do that by going to the tracking page, selecting start or stop, very straightforward. Same idea with the EarthMate app. You go to the tracking section, up in the top corner, you have start and stop. Um, and you can see from our screenshot, this is uh, a lot of data spread over a long period of time. I jumped past it quickly. Um, but so for navigation, the, the EarthMate app has the ability to download lots of very useful maps. You see here aerial imagery, you see here topographic data. There are also NOAA nautical charts and USGS quad sheets. Encourage you to get as many maps as you feel you might need. Um, I certainly use the aerial imagery and the quad sheets and the, um, and the topographic data. Uh, so the process to do this, you go to the map page, you select the layers icon in the upper corner, you choose get maps to download. We give you a list of all of the available maps that you might download and you just hit the two down arrows and it pulls it in. Just center over the area where you're going to be traveling and, uh, and it knows which maps to get for that region. And that's it. And then you can use the layers icon to turn those maps on and off later. If you want to add maps to your InReach Explorer Plus, a little different process, you go to the Explore website, you go to the Map tab, and you choose the Get More Maps option. The Get More Maps option shows you a list of countries and regions. That's where you can go to choose North America. You can choose your state. You see all the maps that are available. You can download those. Um, and, and you actually you choose the Sync option. And when you and when you choose the sync option, that puts them onto the device, and then you can manage those maps by pressing menu from the map page, and you can see you get this list of check marks to toggle on and off your maps. Um, dun, dun, dun. Oh, and this is this is a worthwhile note. The InReach Explorer Plus is a device that uses uh, really more the Delorme system, so it doesn't actually support the Garmin maps. That's um, that's something that comes that came along later with the GPS Map 66i, but for folks using the Explorer Plus, uh, it doesn't use the Topo 24K or the Hunt View or the Blue Chart. It uses the maps that you find on the Explore website. So an, an important distinction there. Ways to create a waypoint in Explore, you can do it on the website. Very straightforward to create a waypoint. Use the little waypoint button, create the details hit the green check mark. Um, same idea on the app. From the map, you can choose mark waypoint. You can put in details for it, uh, the waypoint name, that sort of thing, and save it. And then from the device, if you go to the home page, you go to waypoints. When you see the waypoint list, the first option is create a new waypoint, edit the name, edit the symbol, um, moving a little bit quickly so we can get to questions from everybody. But um, check out the slides, it's it's really straightforward for how to create waypoints. Uh, then if you want to navigate, same idea, go back to the device, look at that waypoint list, select the waypoint that you're interested in, choose the navigate option. Really straightforward, uh, similar process from the EarthMate app, choose the waypoint list from the menu, pick the waypoint that you're interested in, choose the navigate option. So find the waypoint page, find the list, pick the waypoint and navigate for really for all of it. Uh, creating a route, this is done on the Explore website. You use the little new route icon that's up in the top corner. And from here, you're gonna tap out uh, at each of the, of the shaping points of the route. So you can create uh, a detailed hike by tapping on the trail at, along the way. And then you save that by again giving it a name and a color with the green check mark that saves the route um, and it'll put it in a list so that you can navigate it same as a waypoint you go to the routes page you view the list of way of routes mount rainier day two you choose the detail and you hit the navigate button same from the earthmate app you look at the routes list once you see the list you pick the route that you're interested in 
you choose the navigate button exactly like waypoints same for routes find the page choose from the list and choose navigate map share is the page we talked about that is where your friends and family go to see the tracking data that your inreach device is sending to the website um, the the map share page is a share.garmin.com slash and then the url that you specified when you created uh, when you enabled the map share on the explore website um, i changed the name of my map share based on my adventure so it's easy for me to tell people it could be share.garmin.com slash trek across main or share.garmin.com slash where's chip something fun like that but the point is i send it to my to my friends and family and it allows them to follow along while i'm on my adventure they can also choose my uh my name and they can send me a message there's a little send message thing that pops up and i apologize i got ahead of myself but this is where you will go i talked about how you go to the explore website you go to social you enable map share and then you can edit this this little uh, um, share uh, the the url so you can edit it and make it custom uh, once you've enabled that then you email it you you edit it and then you can email it. you can also adjust preferences for it and so you can come here and you can do things like include a collection that you've created on the explore site you can specify that to show up so if i'm planning a big hike i'm going to climb mount rainier i create the routes i create the waypoints i turn that into a collection on the explore site i can then go into map share settings and i can choose to make that collection visible so they don't just see the breadcrumb trail of where i've been they see the route and the waypoints of where i'm planning to go it creates a a, a more rich and and um, a detailed experience for them as people following along while I'm on my adventure. There are other things you can do, like put in a password. Uh, you can control whether they can send you a message or not. You can even control whether they can ping your location to see uh, where you are along your trip. All those things can be done with the map share settings. Uh, and the last note here is um dun, dun, dun. oh yes and then map share is the way that people go to initiate a message with you so if you put your map share link out on social media then all your friends and family that follow you can go and use that link to send you a message you don't have to initiate a conversation with every person that might follow along it's a very useful uh tool that's in map share how to share your link uh, simple from the explore website there's an email option do that make sure that everybody has your map share link before you get into the backcountry you can also do that from the inreach explorer plus by choosing tracking and then share and then you can uh, send it and that will also include a, a link to your map share page uh, when it goes out and you type a little message i'm starting my trip follow along at my map share and you choose who you want that message to go to uh, yes, and it adds a link. We've talked a bit about weather, just a few details here. Uh, you, there are three types of forecasts. There's that land forecast I mentioned, there's a premium land, uh, and then there's a marine forecast as well. The, the value here is that the premium forecasts have, an, have more uh, readings, more granularity in their forecast, but they, they include the same kind of content uh, and you see here how to select it. You go to weather, you choose either your current location or a new location. You pick that forecast type, basic premium marine, uh, and then it fetches the forecast. Same process for the app. You go to weather, you choose if you want to get the weather forecast for your current location um, or if you want to get for a different location. And then you choose the forecast type, basic weather uh, or, or premium marine and when that weather forecast comes in you see that detail with the condition the the temperature the percent chance of precipitation uh, if it's a marine forecast it will give you wave height it will give give you wind speed all the things that are important for for either land navigation or marine yeah. now a quick look at sos obviously a very important feature for all of our inreach devices including the inreach explorer plus 
In case of an emergency, you can use the SOS button on the side of the device to reach out to Garmin IERCC. They are there ready to help 24 seven. Um, and they have a list of all of the important uh, or the local area search and rescue for any place in the world where you might need assistance. Um, and, and so you can use that uh, to connect to the IERCC. Uh, it has 100% global coverage. It has a tracking feature so that when you declare SOS, if you're in a boat and your boat's moving, drifting, something like that, or if you're in an area where it wasn't safe to stay, perhaps you came across a, you know, there was a forest fire or something you had to move. Um, that tracking is an important piece as well. Um, you can use the messaging capabilities to respond to a question from the IERCC. They may ask, what's the nature of your emergency? You can respond to them. You can also, um, if you are unable to respond to them, the, the, it certainly does not impact their ability to send local area search and rescue to your, to your location. They will still do that. It's just one of the things we tell users is the more information that we can provide to the IERCC, the more detail they can provide to the people who are coming to offer assistance. They may help them in the equipment that they choose to bring. Um, it may help them with timing. How urgent is it to send uh, people into harm's way to try and help you? Is it possible that they, things could um, could wait until weather improves or until morning or, or things like that? But uh, certainly take advantage of the two-way capabilities of um, the InReach Explorer Plus for any SOS. So a quick look at how to actually use it. Uh, you can trigger the SOS by first opening the SOS door on the side of the device and pressing and holding that button. As I mentioned, it's not a, for a certain count or anything like that. You press and hold the button until you see this SOS countdown timer appear. Um, you want to hold it until that happens and then you can release the button and after 20 seconds, it's guaranteed that that message will go out. Uh, you don't have to do anything else. If, uh, if your injury doesn't allow you to interact with the device anymore, that's the important step. Press and hold the button until you see the countdown timer. Once the countdown timer completes, it will declare the SOS. It will tell local, uh, excuse me, it will tell the IARCC that you have an emergency. They will be able to um, interact with local area search and rescue and with you, and they will, they will act as that conduit going back and forth uh, to share details. Um, and then after your emergency has been resolved, you can cancel the SOS, and that's an important step because it actually tells the Garmin IERCC that you no longer need help, and they can communicate that to search and rescue if perhaps you realize that you didn't need assistance before help got to you or um, in general it just allows for that uh, communication pipe to be managed on your end in the back country and on the IERCC's end uh, where they are in the dispatch center. You can declare an SOS from the app, from the EarthMate app as well. You choose SOS from the menu and then there are two physical actions even with your phone you have to tap that SOS button and slide. We want to make sure that you don't accidentally declare SOS. So two physical actions. You can send a text message to initiate the SOS. Same idea. You wait for the countdown timer to complete. And then that confirmation message is sent from your device to the Garmin IERCC. You can message back and forth. And you can choose cancel. Um, same message. Uh, note that we talked about before. The EarthMate app has to be paired to your your inReach Explorer Plus, um, there is an additional feature that we've that we've created that is that is interesting. On occasion, the IERCC may send you a phone number for local area search and rescue and say uh, the 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 search and rescue team would like to communicate with you directly, and they can send you a number, and then you can use this send message to feature you just arrow up to that you press enter to follow the instructions um, for sending either a, a customer or quick message to that number that allows you to talk directly to the um, uh, to the responder using again using your reach device so um, a, a little sos message tip there at the end 
that was the detail, a lot of it. I apologize, we, we ran through a ton of content, but um, for the InReach Explorer, plus there are some additional resources. We always talk about the Explore website as the place to go to manage the plans uh, and your account. The Garmin support site, there are additional help documents, there are manuals, there are, there are um, videos, and even the prior webinars like the one you're watching, those are all available on the support site. Then I always talk about my favorite section is the Garmin blog. That is where you can go read about the latest inReach adventures and stories from folks like everyone that is listening to this webinar. We love to share the SOS stories and when people bring them to us. And uh, so check out the Garmin.com blog for more inReach content.